And that lineup was playing with so much energy. They were getting me up out my seat with the plays that they were doing. I was over here hooping and hollering. Pretty sure my neighbors might have filed a noise complaint because the plays they were pulling off were crazy. Quentin Grimes dribbled behind his back, threw it up alley-oop to Obi Toppin, caught it for the tomahawk slam. You got Emmanuel quickly throwing the basketball damn near to the top of the backboard and Obi Toppin just skying up to grab it, come down and put it back up. I mean, that team, that lineup, they were doing some crazy plays out there. Hey, what's going on? I'm Keith here from Sports Vibes TV, and this video I'm gonna be talking about the Knicks 99 to 90 victory over the Atlanta Hawks. I'm going to talk about some major moments in the game and also go through the box score and talk about some of our players' performances. And at the end of the video, I am going to talk about some major takeaways from this game and what it could mean for this rotation moving forward. So if you like this video, do me a solid, smash that like button, and also make sure you're subscribed and you have the notification bell set to all. That way you're notified whenever I drop new content. So with that being said, let's jump right into the video. So in this game, we were without Kimball Walker, Derrick Rose and Nerlens Noel. And it forced Tom Thibodeau to elevate Alec Burks into the starting lineup. And it seems like Alec Burks took all the energy and defensive intensity that he played with with the second unit and just brought it to the starting lineup because from the start of the game, our defense was on point and we were playing with a lot of energy to start. We played a full 48 minutes with high level defense and high level uh, energy and intensity. And it was important for this team to have that. This was a rivalry game. The Atlanta Hawks eliminated us from the playoffs last year. They've been talking spicy. Also their fans have been talking spicy. So for the Knicks to show up for this game and be ready to play with that level of, of defense and that level of energy on a second night of a back-to-back -back, i think you have to give them a round of applause and salute that performance because it was important for them to show that tonight now alec burks he was phenomenal he was like i said instrumental in us having that energy and that defensive intensity for the game he was 7 to 17 from the field four or seven from the three-point line, seven rebounds, and he had three assists, had 23 points for the game overall. Now, he had solid numbers, but in the first half, it was more so his defense and energy that he was bringing to the team. It was in that third quarter that he went off and really gave us a lead and put us in a place where we could be a little bit more comfortable heading into the fourth quarter. In that third quarter, Alec Burks was on fire from three. He was four or five from the three-point line and pretty much nullified any kind of run that the Atlanta Hawks were trying to go on and trying to close that you know that deficit now Julius Randle you can see offensively he really didn't have a great night it was three or 14 from the field or three from the three-point line he did help out a lot on the on the glass had 11 rebounds four assists only had eight points for the game and you know offensively it wasn't his night but he had a lot of energy out there on defense and also i like the fact that he was able to help try to tone down trey young's offensive performance because trey young had a phenomenal night against us but in that fourth quarter in order to try to shut him down or and other times throughout the game we were switching Julius Randle onto Trey Young in order to try to stop them from being so effective in the pick and roll. And Julius Randle did an admirable job in that assignment, and I got to give him kudos for that. So even though he didn't have a good game offensively, he still brought the energy throughout the game, and uh, he worked hard out there on defense against Trey Young. So I'll, I'll give Julius Randle some kudos for that. Now, Evan Fournier. Evan Fournier also had a pretty good game he was 7 to 13 from the field four or six from the three-point line uh, two rebounds 20 points out there and with Evan Fournier I like the fact that he was he was pretty important in, in us getting out to a good start offensively he was three or six in that first quarter and also in the third quarter when the team kind of got into a rut because halfway through the game you could say maybe the last two or three minutes of the second quarter to about you know three or four minutes into the third quarter we were in a rut offensively the atlanta hawks were like on a combined 
15 to 0 run throughout that span. And Evan Fournier, he knocked down two big shots to help kind of stop that run. It was about five points in total, but those were timely buckets that helped, you know, get things back or swing the momentum back towards the Knicks side. So Evan Fournier, he was solid in this game. Defensively, there were still some issues here and there, but for the most part, he played with a lot of energy. And I liked what he was doing out there on the court for us offensively. He was a little bit more aggressive trying to look for a shot and his shot was falling tonight. So salute to Evan Fournier on a good performance. RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett was another player that helped get us out to a good start. He was three or four in that first quarter and he was doing it in a multitude of ways. He was able to knock down a three. He was able to get into the paint. He had a floater. He had a nice little fadeaway jump shot from the mid range close to, you know, from the elbow that he was able to knock down and he looked good tonight too. So it was good to see that type of performance from RJ Barrett, seeing that he's starting to get back. Yo, you would hope he's starting to get back into the flow of things. So he was, like I said, six of 11 from the field, one of three from the three point line. He had seven rebounds, helped out on the boards as well. And, and 15 points in total and you can see this team it was a team effort when it comes to rebounding so you might look at the box score and see Clint Capella went crazy on the glass I think he had 21 rebounds in total but if you look at the team comparison the Atlanta Hawks had 52 rebounds and we had 50 so they out rebounded us but it wasn't by a large margin it just so happens that of the majority of their rebounds were collected by Clint Capella, whereas we had a better, you know, disparity of who was collecting rebounds on our team. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, you can see, didn't do much offensively, but he was a beast down there in the paint. He was he was getting into the mix. He was fighting for a lot of rebounds, fighting for loose balls. And, you know, they were saying it on the announcer's table. You can see he was obviously the biggest man on the court and he made life difficult for Clint Capella. Like I said, Clint Capella did have a, a monster game on the boards, but he had to work for a lot of those rebounds. And Mitch definitely made things difficult for the Atlanta Hawks trying to score in the paint. There were some slip ups. There was an alley-oop, I think late, if I'm not mistaken, it was in the fourth quarter where Mitch allowed Clint Capella to get behind him for an alley-oop. But for the most part, Mitch was solid in making it difficult for the Atlanta Hawks to, to finish in the paint or get comfortable, you know, attacking the basket and trying to score. Now with the second unit, Tibbs only used rookies and sophomores. And I'm telling you guys, it was refreshing to see. At one point, we had five homegrown players on the court together. It was Emmanuel Quickly, Quentin Grimes, RJ Barrett, Obi Toppin, and Jericho Sims. And that lineup was playing with so much energy. They were getting me up out my seat with the plays that they were doing. I was over here hooping and hollering. Pretty sure my neighbors might have filed a noise complaint because the plays they were pulling off were crazy. Quentin Grimes dribbled behind his back, threw it up alley-oop to Obi Toppin, caught it for the tomahawk slam. You got Emmanuel quickly throwing the basketball damn near to the top of the backboard and Obi Toppin just skying up to grab it, come down and put it back up. I mean, that team, that lineup, they were doing some crazy plays out there, but it was exciting. And, you know, you look at Emmanuel quickly, he was 4-12 for the game, 1-7 from the three-point line. He had seven assists only nine points but the way he was pushing the pace and being a, a point guard out there a lot of people said they were skeptical about Emmanuel quickly being a point guard but he was doing its thing tonight especially setting up his teammates running the pick and roll and you know I like the fact that they're using quick a lot more in you know situations where he's the point guard and he's running the show even though at times they'll have Alec Burks out there with him to kind of lean on um, when, you know, when Derrick Rose isn't available, but I think Quick is slowly but surely blossoming into that point guard a lot of us think he can be. And a lot of the work he's been putting out, putting in, in the offseason is short, starting to show itself here this season. And I think without Derrick Rose, it's allowing Emmanuel quickly to kind of learn that point guard position or be given the minutes and given the opportunity to run the show just a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when Derrick Rose returns. You know, it has quick shown enough that maybe he could be elevated to the starting lineup, you know, when players get healthy, you know, who knows? But I think Manuel quickly is definitely making a case for uh, entry into that starting lineup. 
Now, Obi Toppin, he only played 16 minutes, which was a little bit frustrating because of how he performed in that second quarter. In the second quarter, he had 11 points. Uh, you know, he was out there. I, I was talking about the highlight plays, the dunks, the layups, getting out there in transition and finishing. So to see him only get 16 minutes, I think that was somewhat frustrating. Hopefully, Tibbs is going to allow this guy and see that this guy is contributing on multiple levels and start giving him some more minutes before the game he was five of eight oh of one from the three-point line two rebounds two assists for 13 points we need to start a campaign to get obi top in some minutes because he's performing to a high level right now with this a little bit amount of minutes he's getting and we need to see what he can do if he's getting 25 26 27 minutes per game so Tibbs is going to have to figure out a way to get him on the court more often. You look at uh, Jericho Sims. Jericho Sims was a big surprise coming into this game. He was 2-2 two two from the field, 6 rebounds, uh, 6 points. He also had 2 big blocks. And he was a physical presence there in the paint. Made life difficult for the Suns, for John Collins and, you know, Clint Capella when he got matched up against them. And I like what I see from Jericho Sims, you know. If he continues to play like this, I think they need to convert his two-way contract and have him up and be a legitimate member of the rotation, especially with how, you know, hit or miss we've been with our center's health throughout the season. I even had to drop a tweet, you know, online during the game because, you know, right now, Nick's center is the most dangerous occupation in the nba so with jericho sims performing the way he has i think he needs some more minutes this baby Bakers rotation i think everybody that's involved with it or included in it needs to see more playing time and tibbs needs to find a way uh, george and i discussed and, Fo and stephen fox foxy we discussed on the pregame show about teams that have deeper rotations and are still legitimate title contenders you look at the warriors they're going 11, 12 deep through our game sometimes. Why can't the Knicks do a, a, a similar thing, especially with depth being one of our strengths this season? So hopefully we'll be able to get Sims, you know, uh, Toppin, and even Quentin Grimes some more minutes. Quentin Grimes didn't have the greatest game on offense, but he played solid defense. He was pesky out there and made life difficult for the Atlanta Hawks. So Quentin Grimes, even though his shot hasn't been falling in the last two games, I'm liking the energy he has out there and his defensive intensity. So these baby Bakers definitely need to see more minutes. Another point that I wanted to mention about Emmanuel quickly out there tonight is, even though his shot wasn't falling, he was 4-12, 1-7 from the three-point line, that one three-pointer he hit was very important to the outcome of the game. Because at that point, it seemed like the Atlanta Hawks were trying to claw themselves back into the game and momentum was slowly starting to turn towards the Hawks. But Emmanuel quickly, being that microwave, that spark plug for this team, knocked down a three, completely deflated the Atlanta Hawks. And from that point on, the lead was never really in jeopardy. I think the closest the Hawks got it to was nine. And that's what we ended up winning by. So got to give quickly a quick shout out for that as well, because he has time and time again hit timely shots that have affected the momentum positively to, you know, for the New York Knicks. So kudos to Quick tonight in his performance. Now, my biggest takeaway from this game is the fact that changes need to be made to the starting lineup. If you look at the Cavs game, we didn't have Kimball Walker. We elevated Derrick Rose to the starting lineup and, you know, the team was not good defensively. You look at this game, we don't have Kimball Walker. We don't have Derrick Rose. We elevate Alec Burks to the starting lineup and we're playing defense like was, you know, last year. And I think that just shouts that we can't have two minus defenders in that starting lineup if you want to be serious about getting to the playoffs and into the second round. So the Knicks need to make a change, whether it's elevating Alec Burks to the starting lineup or elevating Emmanuel quickly to the starting lineup, a player that I think has deserved entry into that starting lineup and has been playing phenomenal defense he's played great defense in the game tonight and i think if you have any one of those two in the starting lineup my preference of course would be emmanuel quickly then you're going to see 
that this starting lineup is going to get off to better starts in games. We won't be allowing teams to build big leads in the, four, in the first quarter. And in the third quarter, we won't see teams either chip away at our leads or continue to build upon you know big leads in that third quarter and create situations where we have our bench having to scrap and fight in order to keep us in games. So I think that this game really just... Put that out there on Front Street and let everybody know that changes need to be made to this starting lineup. The starters out there played great and we beat the breaks off the Atlanta Hawks, which were the second hottest team coming into the game. And I think we, the team we saw, you know, in the Suns game versus the team we saw in the Hawks game, it was night and day. And I think only one major change was made, and that was taking out Kimball Walker from the starting lineup and elevating Alec Burks to the starting lineup. Now, where does that leave Kimball Walker, uh, you know, in the rotation? That I'm not sure. I mentioned before we can run a, a deeper rotation, so maybe we can find time to get Kimba out there in a situation where he's not on the court with another minus defender. And in those situations, I think Kimber Walker would still be able to ex excel. But we're going to see, you know, what Tom Thibodeau decides to do. Because he did mention towards, you know, not towards the end of the game, but he mentioned after the game that, you know, changes could be made. It, it, it's going to be interesting to see what he does. But I think now it falls on Tom Thibodeau to make the right decisions with this rotation and with this starting lineup. So you guys, let me know what you thought about the game down in the comments. Once again, I'm Keese, host of Sports Vibes TV. And I'm out.